uh, Rowan. And uh, I went off and said, I don't know, I thought it was kind of bad, and I kind of started, you know, the bellyache a little bit of uh, how I think WWE was really stupid for breaking up the Wyatt family. It appears yeah, they... that, at least in part, the Wyatt family is back together after what was a really a phenomenal matchup. But the way he went down on his knees and he held his arms both out, it almost makes you think the third and final member is there, but not there. Well, the, here's the thing. It looks like he's he's basically preparing people to reimagine that person back. And yeah. here's the thing. Is it going to... And I guess we need to go off and, and you know, backtrack a little bit because you're definitely getting very excited, and I don't blame you. <laughs> honestly, this was probably one of my favorite matches, and one of the few times I actually popped was when <laughs> Roman Reigns went for his uh, apron dropkick, and uh, Roman, uh, excuse me, Bray Wyatt went off and clotheslined him. That so I was... thought that pop, I've never saw that, and I thought that was really innovative. I have said this on many occasions. Bray Wyatt's probably one of my favorite wrestlers on the WWE roster right now. And considering this guy's pedigree, you know, I'm surprised WWE hasn't tried to push him even harder. And considering how much, you know, honestly, I think. He's probably a better worker than many of his family members. Uh, he's yeah, definitely more absolutely. He's definitely more charismatic than on the mic than I think anyone, including his grandfather, uh, WWE Hall of Famer Black Jack Mulligan. Mm-hmm. And so at the end of this matchup, it w- appeared that Roman Reigns was going <coughs> to beat Bray Wyatt when a hooded figure. Went off and pushed Roman Reigns into the ring post and then super kicked him. E- even though that myself and everyone else watching at home and everybody in the arena saw who it was, the announcers were clueless. Well, the thing is, you didn't actually see the face, but as soon as you saw the beard, it it became pretty clear. It was clear. pretty obvious it, it, it was Luke Harper. Yeah, because it was pretty His obvious. beard is about as noticeable as mine. And again, Luke Harper, again, is one of them. Another one of my favorite workers. I've been a fan of his ever since I saw him working as Brody Lee in Ring of Honor. Uh, so I was I was thrilled to see these guys back together. I don't know necessarily if I want to see Eric Rowan be brought together. I'd actually almost prefer to if they went off and put uh, Bo Dallas, yes, uh, Bray Wyatt's younger brother, in with the mix. There, it seemed to me that they, they sort of teased the idea that they might be bringing these t- two together uh, a couple of months ago when I believe it was, t- I don't know if it was Dean Ambrose, I can't remember who it was, but uh, someone that, uh, it, maybe it was even Roman Reigns, I can't exactly remember, but Bo Dallas came out and was getting really mad at somebody and kind of warned them, you know, they, to watch out. And they went off, they stomped Bo Dallas, and then were almost immediately wiped out by Bray Wyatt. I think that was Dean Ambrose. If you guys know who this is, remember who this is, let me know. Uh, you can, uh, you know, send me a message on Twitter, at that mask guy. Or at Fizz Mask Show. Which is our show's Twitter account. You can also follow this man right the here. very enthusiastic at real C A P T Fizz at real Captain Fizz. So there we go. We also you can find us in Tumblr, Twi- uh, Facebook, and YouTube. YouTube. And hopefully we'll have the video for this, or at least the audio video of this, yes. up on YouTube uh, probably within the next twenty four hours. Pretty much, it'll be coming up right soon. So, anyways, um, I thought it was great, and so. I mean, at this point, it does appear that they are going to bring in... They could bring in the third member. I'm not sure they necessarily need to, but it would be nice if you know they brought in one of these guys. I e- pers- either way, it was an epic finish. It was an epic finish either way, yes. absolutely. Epic, epic, epic. We, we've been tweeting about this match all night. My Twitter's been blowing up. It has been phenomenal. I think I've tweeted like about 10, 15 tweets. Yeah, tonight. you were real mad at me because I've really gotten you Ooh. into this whole Twitter thing. And I've taken off by storm. And all I really wanted to do is just get you to do it as a way to help advertise the show. And boy, have I been yeah. advertising. Yes. Uh, no. I'm sorry if I annoy you. Um, no, but it, 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 it won't stop. 
<laughs> um, so obviously my favorite part of the night, which was really r- well done tonight, which was the Diva Triple Match. The Triple Threat Matchup, uh, yes, fe- featuring uh, Sasha Banks as a member from Team Bad. Uh, with Naomi. With Naomi and Tamina. Yeah. Uh, Charlotte. Uh, Ric Flair's daughter. Ric Flair's daughter. Woo! You know, representing her, her, uh, her team along with Paige and my with, girl Paige, uh, Becky, <laughs> Becky Lynn, Sitch, Becky Lynn, um, Becky Lynch, excuse me, Becky and then uh, Brie the Bella be- going off and representing Team Boo Bella, which, Bella. Is, which uh, features her along with Alicia Fox and her sister Nicole. This marked the end of the Bella era. Well, here's the thing, you know, the big thing with uh, Nikki Bella is that she's been pushing, uh, you know. Getting beating AJ Lee's uh, record as Divas Champion, which was 295 days. She's going off and been doing like the hashtag 300 days or something like that. I don't think anyone necessarily wants to see it. A lot of people don't really like the Bellas. I, also, I think the only people who really like the Bellas are probably the, the men. Bellas. Well, yeah, probably each other and their men, Daniel Bryan and uh, John Cena. Yeah, and you, honestly, you got to question the attitude of the two, though. They don't seem like it, it, it's a personal attitude. It's not a business attitude. And the thing is, that maybe that's just characters. I don't know. I don't. I refuse to watch the uh, Total Diva series. Oh, which you know, I, I scandal, keep, scandal, 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 scandal. I keep hearing all this stuff going off, and you know, being suggested on you know one thing or another. Honestly, if Brie Bella were to you know say that you know, hey, I'm. I'm pregnant with Daniel Bryan's son. I'm walking away. I don't think she'd be terribly missed. No, and no. She probably would be more than happy to walk away. And, and the one thing I find amazing about tonight was the fact that not even three minutes after I tweeted that it was the end of the Be- uh, Bella's you know time, and it was time for Paige, that Paige's team wins. Yeah, Charlotte. Uh, Pins Brie Bella with <laughs> the, her version of the figure four, which she calls the figure eight, because she goes off and uh, does a bridge while doing the maneuver. Which is basically reminds you of Bray Wyatt. To, I get, well, yeah, he's just he less got, creepy, more boob. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> to a certain extent. Yeah, I, although Bray Wyatt's got a you know, big set there, too, so. so yeah, I, it's very <laughs> incredible that he can do that. Yeah. That. Creepy, that, backwards, that, spider-like. Yes. Yeah, it's, that, that it's sort of like a crab dance. And here's the thing, though. I mean, um, I am a regular watcher of NXT. So to see Sasha Banks and Charlotte in the ring, I already knew just based off those two that was going to be a good matchup. They definitely helped Brie Bella elevate her game. Brie is by far uh, the, the weaker worker in the Bella Twins. Which is a big reason why Nikki is, you know, front and center, and Bree's kind of the one hiding underneath the stage. Yo, know, you know, doing her high, you know, being her second in the yard, trying to do twin magic, or whatever. Yeah. And so, but they went off and managed to elevate Brie Bella's game, and that just tells you how good they are. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, I'm not taking anything away Tw- from twin Brie. magic could not help them tonight. And I'll say this, Brie Bella, again, I thought uh, this was, as I said, this was one of her better matches. She definitely. Uh, I I like the style that she uses. I do wish that she would stop trying to emulate her husband Daniel Bryan, but with some of the kicks that she does. Uh, but I do enjoy that n- those knee attacks that she does while uh, her opponent is laying in the ropes. Yes, I agree. Big Mike. Uh well, yeah. As as you guys were saying, uh, it was uh, the. Bella Twins were doing what they do best, obviously, and, uh, yeah, but it just seemed at the end, uh, Paige's team came out on top, and, uh, they were victorious, so it was, uh, great Divas. And you know what, it was Viva La Page. Yeah, yeah, honestly, I thought this was the best way to go off and to start this, like, three-way feud that they're going at. I'm actually surprised that, uh, the Bellas went with... Uh, Bree, I honestly thought they would have thrown Alicia Fox to the Wolves. 
on this one. Just be, but I don't but know. We, we, with the cockiness of the Bellows, though, they, they they cannot do anything without them being involved in it. We all know that. We saw it tonight. It blew up in their face. Viva La Page. Well, Viva I, La, La Revolution. Goodbye, Bellas. So yeah. I mean, honestly, we'll we'll see where this really goes from here. I, I, uh, I, I'm yeah, excited. I, 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 I think you're you're getting a little ahead of yourself here. You know what? Viva La Page. All right. So <laughs> he's definitely in love with Page. He, he, uh, you're you're definitely <laughs> in love with Page. Absolutely. Okay. So honestly, this should have been the main event. You know, hands down, it had the attitude, it had the flair, it had the drama, it had me jumping out of my seat. Kevin Owens versus John Cena. And, you know, considering what they did later on in the show, I would completely agree with you on that one. This was an incredible matchup. but we Oh, ex- absolutely. We that... expected this, Yes, though. and see, this is why it should have been the main event. Kevin Owens and John Cena have, this is their third matchup. Um, all three ending in losses. Or, sorry, two of the three ending in losses for Kevin, Kevin Owens. Owens. You know, it's sad to see, but Kevin Owens has really emerged. Losses or no losses, he's emerged as a powerhouse. And here's the thing. Kevin Owens ate not one, not two, but three attitude adjustments, including, you know, the third one, you know, from the middle rope. Yeah. And, it, you know, so... What we you know saw was that John Cena just fought and fought and fought and tried to. Eventually, he gets the the win with the the step over toe hold face lock, for, better known as the STF. Yeah, a phenomenal finish. But, and what you know what? Honestly, uh, I haven't been a fan of John Cena's work for a long time, but since winning the United States title. I become a huge fan. This guy has stepped up his game dramatically. I think a huge part in though is Kevin Owens has caused John Cena to step up his game unlike ever before. Well, I just think it's been this year, ever since you know he put the WWE World Heavyweight Title in his rearview mirror and has been focusing on the United States style. This guy has been using you know a, a lot more moves in his his arsenal. And he's been, you know, bringing moves out of his arsenal that he hasn't used in a long time. But huge props to Kevin to be able to stand up, look fear in its face, and spit on it. Well, here's the thing. Kevin Owens, I mean, the fact that he's been called up to the main roster this fast and has been this successful has been no surprise to me. I've I've been known to... Kevin Owens, you know, already seen him wrestle since his time in Ring of Honor when he was wrestling with a guy at the time known Which as was El Generico. Exactly one year ago today. Well, one year ago today was his final matchup yeah. in Ring of Honor. Yeah. And so he, here he is now. And so I wasn't surprised how quickly he was called up to the main roster. He doesn't necessarily look like your atypical WWE superstar, which is great. Because back in what I consider to be you know, the golden era of the WWE. The dynasty back, era. The dynasty era back in the 19. 19- uh, 80s and early 1990s, you didn't see all these you know skinny guys with you know wash tub abs and you know and you know the you know generic looking haircuts and everything. Oh, no, you yeah. saw the big pound for pound muscle you and had, fat. You had big guys, you had little guys. And Ray, Ray Mysterio. A, you yeah, know, look at the Big Show. Yeah, you know, these were guys that. They didn't care what they looked like. They were there because that's what they enjoyed and doing. So, Kevin Owens is the same. And so, I mean, that's part of the reason why I gravitate to guys like Kevin Owens and Bray White because they look so different than everyone else. And that's yeah. great. And Kevin Owens, he doesn't look like he should be able to pull off the moves he does. This guy does, like, swanton bombs off the top rope. This guy does cannonballs. This guy can do a moonsault. This is a guy who had me jumping off my seat with every move. And see, this was the thing where I sat there and honestly, I kind of laughed because this is kind of the reaction I expect from a lot of younger fans. And I, I've become really fickle as a wrestling fan because I'll sit there and like, oh yeah, no, the match is going to end here. All oh, the matches are going to end there. And so it takes a lot, at least with WWE, for me to go off. And to pop out, you know, of uh, you know my seat. You know, I, I have not seen a match like these two fighting um, since 
God forbid, when I was a kid and, you know, Rey Mysterio all the time. Rikishi. You know, the big classic guys, the ones that you know.